Hello there, Challenger Coach in here reviewing these patch notes. Now, just to be clear, last season I was Challenger, this season I'm Master. I'm just on the Keanu Chang account, of course, and here I'm gonna show that I'm Platinum 1, of course. Um, okay, so let's look at the patch notes. Now, if I scroll downward, this is just some type of rank and end, we don't care about that. Not real info that we care about right now. Uh, and he got slightly nerfed, 5 less percentage damage and 10 less damage early on. And 10 later on. So what does it mean? It means that right now she's worst at lane bullying melee champions. And her all-in gonna be generally weaker. Which means that uh, one-shotting with any it will less likely to happen, right? And you maybe need a little bit more short trades until you can all-in. Uh, more so like this will confuse any player so you don't last it right now with your Q as you did before because it will deal slightly less damage which is gonna mess with any player's muscle memory and then as I said short trades are weaker all ins are a little bit weaker uh, this is generally a nerf towards any but when you have some points in your Q you should still you should be able to just like WQ the wave anyway so it's like like later on the wave conveyor is not too too much affected from my own opinion. Uh Aphelios, reasonable nerf. I do believe his ceiling is quite high, so from 2.5% to 2% up to 7.1 from 9%. That's a reasonable lifestyle nerf, lifestyle on abilities. So 8.33 to 30% to 5.70%, not 75. Oh, that's a big number. But this this ability healed a lot. Let's be real. Like he healed up in no time really fast, right? So this will definitely cut his healing, which was one of his big strengths, right? Like this this weapon did a lot of healing. Now this is a big a lot. I'm gonna be real. This is a this is a very big like healing nerf. Uh, which means his duel is gonna be significantly weaker than before. Gravitum, the gravity cannon, close duration on attacks will be reduced from 3.5 to 2.5. Uh, will this even matter? I mean, if you can constantly slow someone, it doesn't really matter. Except if they have maybe a dash and it expires faster. But other than that, if you can constantly basic attack someone, it shouldn't be a big deal. Uh, Sentry's base attack speed is gonna affect its DPS by 0.14 seconds, but note uh, his Sentry's attack speed scales with his own attack speed, so it is definitely gonna affect all of these changes, gonna affect his early game, of course. Then his late game scaling is a bit weaker. Um, is the champion still viable? Well, the chakrams are nerfed, right? Um, I would say the champion is still definitely playable. Before, from my own opinion, he was kinda OP in this current meta, right? And these changes just tone him a bit down. This is more significant, but I do believe the champion will be still viable, playable. Ivan gets a damage uh, nerf because he's a supportive champion with CC, with utility in his kit, and he shouldn't deal this much damage. So what happened? They nerfed his damage by 10 early on. Then later on by 10, and the AP ratio is 10 percentage lower, which means generally he has less DPS. Because even on top lane, everyone is funny how viable he is with Tonger, or some people are so airy. Uh, so this is gonna take away some of his early game fighting power mainly. Then Daisy gonna have less movement speed, which means it will be harder for Daisy to connect those basic attacks, I suppose. But if you have Rallys Crystal Scepter, it shouldn't really matter this nerf. But what what matters more is the 20 damage cut early on, because it's funny how much the damage Daisy does in these days, right? So 20 less damage and 10 less damage from your W, which is 30 already at level 6, minus the 10 percent JP scaling. So it will definitely feel like Ivan does have less DPS, because he's a supportive champion after all, right? It should not hurt that hard. Now, Kindred again got nerfed, uh, I suppose, because of the AD carry items uh, were changed in her favor. Which means that um, she can go for different type of builds like Trinity Force, Black Lever, Crit Build, you name it. Uh, and right now uh, they wanted to cut off some of her early game power, which means she has 30 less uh, HP. And also 3 less armor, which generally means her early game clear will be significantly weaker. And also 
she's more vulnerable to invades because of the armor and the HP nerf and she doesn't know how does he invade. Like if she invades at level 3, it's way less likely she's gonna win it, so yeah, I think this is gonna really definitely affect her TT's nerfs, honestly, more on head to clear, weaker early game for an early game champion, I think, I think this is a bit too much, but Blister damage, you don't get nerfed, right? So if you're overfed, you're overfed, right? Um, Lee gets a buff. I don't think so, Lee Sin was that weak, but I think his buffs are okay. So he doesn't get a flat damage buff, but he gets a 5% damage buff on the first part of his Q. And on the second part of his Q, uh, I believe he gets 5 more percentage. Uh, resonating select maximum damage will get a 10% damage buff. So generally speaking, this is a good buff to hard listen because in a fight when you have some degree of cooldown, you're gonna get multiple rotations of Qs, which means uh, you will have a bit more DPS. And then again, what's gonna happen? Um, your early game ganks are a bit more potent because before in the past, his early game got things a bit nerfed here and there, so this will help him a little bit with his clear as well. Nico again reasonably gets nerfed, her cooldown on her Q will be more with 9 early on, then later on it will be the same, it's generally gonna affect her wave clear, lane trades, jungle clear, perhaps even DPS in fights, because in a fight realistically you could get 2 Qs off in an all-in, right? Um, Shapeshifter, so they cut the damage by 10 early on, then later on by 10, AP ratio remains the same. Um... These shouldn't matter all that much, they they do mess with her early game, that's the thing, but overall her scaling sh still should be good enough, because later on it will be 7 seconds anyways, and later on more than often you can just still one shot people if you full combo them without uh, the neediness to get the shape shifter, shape splitter, uh, shape splitter actually, a basic attack off, right? Nico is this guy's for the entire 1.25 seconds. Cast time, right? Now, that was a bit strong, right? Nico is this guy's for the first 0 0.5 seconds of the cast and is, re and is then revealed for the remaining 0 0.75, 0 0.75 seconds. So what does this mean? It's easier for champions in these days right now to perhaps dash out, blink out or flash or perhaps use an ability like a Vladimir pool, right? So it's easier right now to play around rolling, but still there is a 0 0.5 second, uh, uh, I think something like 0 0.5 seconds time for people to re react or... Oh no no, 0 0.75 time to react, so people actually, people can dash out now out of her ultimate. Maybe they should make, make it like a reaction time thing where people sort of have to react with the dash, because 0 0.75 seconds are a lot and everybody in this world gets to dash out of her ult now. This is a big nerf, and this will mess with her win rate um, a lot, because now she loses a lot of her potency. Uh, still, if your teammates have some degree of CC, of course, you can go, go for a good ultimate, but now it's harder to be tricky with Nico. This is gonna affect her a lot, honestly, and you're gonna get way less kills in general because of this change. Nidale gets 5 uh, movement speed, makes her spacing a little bit better, of course, and... Uh, Maybe just in rare situations where, let's say, if it's a spear, you're not in W range. Uh, with this 5 uh, bonus speed buff, maybe you just get to like walk into W range and W someone, which before maybe you couldn't. It just also helps her just a teensy bit to space a little bit better, to run, maybe a teensy bit helps with her jungle clear. Uh, it's just a very tiny, tiny, tiny buff. Um, it helps her slightly with her mobility. Rexa again reasonably gets nerfed, 3 less AD, uh, 4 less um, physical health. This is a bit bad, now I get it Rexa is strong right now in the early game, but he has to be strong because Prowler's Claw is removed, and uh, I don't know, like I wouldn't mess with Rexa from my own honest opinion, just because like, I get it, he's strong, right? And she has her engages and she has her early game power, but that's that's what she does. And then in mid late game, she has no lead, she's sucked into bruisers more than enough and then into tanks and into zonies, right? So I don't feel like, like messing with her early game is a good idea, even throw her early game is strong, which it's supposed to, because now she doesn't have Prowler's Claw anymore. I know people go Stride Breaker, but it's not the same thing, so that's something I wouldn't mess with, honestly. 
Now, health regeneration growth uh, from 1.7 to 1.5, that's fine. Base magic resistance is going to be a bit lower by 2. Magic resistance growth is going to be lowered by uh, 0.20. So this is going to make her a bit more vulnerable to magic damage and, of course, a bit less health regen, which is going to affect her clear to some degree, I suppose, the health regen. And I guess if you're fighting mages, you're going to be a bit more vulnerable. Uh, okay, bonus damage to monsters. So she maxed, maxed Q first now. <laughs> no. So they buffed actually her Q, which I think you are supposed to max, no? Uh, crash down shield. So, uh, dismount attack speed is 30% all the time, which is a buff towards her early game, but a little bit of a nerf later on. So these are positive changes, I assume, right? Of maximum HP, the shield is a bit smaller, but it shouldn't matter too much. So more DPS early on, more damage out of your Q to part monsters. Uh, e full tilt. So the full tilt does also a teensy bit more damage by 20, which is great. So her clear is gonna be a bit better. She's gonna deal a bit less damage on W though, but she's gonna have more attack speed, which makes up to it. So these are not necessarily nerfs. On hit damage, it's gonna be the same, but it's gonna have more AP ratio, damage per light, per light stack, to that 5% per 100 AP of the target's maximum health, to, oh, this is actually a nerf, okay. 3.3, so it's gonna deal less damage, AP bar is gonna be less potent, because, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because AP bar is kind of broken, let's be real. Why? She has some presence in pro play, that's why I assume she gets uh, nerfed out through in solo queue, she's not too great, so she's gonna be a bit less tank, and it's really important because she's gonna get usually multiple shields in a fight, so let's say if you get two shields, then you get 6% less than before. Uh, this is gonna affect her a bit her early game duels, then the ult cooldown is 20 more, which means you gotta wait 20 more seconds, so you're gonna generally have less kills than before. Because of this ultimate nerf, I do believe the champion is still playable, because after all, uh, say if you go a lethality, you still gonna one-shot people, and um, it's like, if you have a lead and you're not likely you're gonna die, then this nerf shouldn't really matter too much. If you don't put yourself in a too vulnerable position, then the ult cooldown matters by 20 seconds, because now it has a longer cooldown, but I think it's a reasonable nerf. Then later on it's only 10, so... Still, the champion gonna feel to be weaker, but I think it's still playable. Wukong gets nerfed because in pro play is too great, in solo queue not so much. Uh, then top lane is not really played too much, Wukong is really off meta, then in the jungle. Uh, he did receive a 20% less damage nerf on his E, which messes with his clear, he's even more invadable now. Um, I mean, this does suck because this messes with his clear. And the slower you clear, the more damage you will also take with Wukong, so I think many things will invade right now Wukong. Um, I mean, this sucks, especially when it comes down to like getting like big objectives down, right? So, uh, these nerfs will affect him, honestly. These nerfs will affect him. It's just 20%, but it does matter quite a lot. Now, that's played of Dark Star. It's a nerf towards champions like... Inferno Trigger, Samira's ult, of course, Misfortune ult, uh, stuff like that in general that you're gonna channel and you're gonna get kills with, you know, maybe Katarina, or from Katarina you don't really build as plays realistically, so I just a weird example, but it's more so Misfortune, maybe Lucian nerf, if anybody builds it on Lucian, but I don't think so, right, not many people, uh, Spareblade, based AD, um, gonna be higher by 30%, but the bonus AD gonna be less by 20% I don't know how good of a trade-off this is because now champions that want to scale with this item really well into the game like Rengar, Ezreal, stuff like that they're gonna get less value out of it which kind of sucks for Rengar specifically as it also it's written in the patch note so it scales worse but it's early game is better mm, don't know honestly because that 30% percentage base AD don't know, because sooner or later the 20% bonus AD is going to just outscale it, right? I mean, the early game going to be just slightly better, so that's that, I mean. I just see it. Static shift, reasonably nerfed. Um, so, the 
energize minion damage 250-45 to 250-450 based on level, zero bonus AP energize non minion damage okay so the non minion damage also gonna be nerfed and this one not gonna have an AP ratio so this item will be progressively more and more useless through the game uh, which means eventually you won't be able to actually kill the backline minions anymore with this so you gotta use an ability so the item is trash or what because they remove the AP ratio then even to champions you're gonna deal less damage by 20% um, I don't think so it's worth anymore to build it because we can clearly see zero AP ratio from 125 percentage which means you can't pay wave pipe anymore as you did before I don't think so it's worth to build static anymore honestly on champions you did before stuff like Leblanc so yeah stuff like that uh, another Rengar nerf um, thing is the uh, Tegan hard nerf the AD ratio same as on the essence river which means that uh, scaling wise is gonna be worse on Rengar in the early game it's gonna be a bit better I assume because of the flat damage buff no AP ratio so if you're going to play an AP champion I wouldn't recommend you to go for it just go for Lich Bane of course ARAM adjustments you don't care I mean nobody plays ARAM some bug fixes I mean those bugs better be fixed but I don't really care about those right now uh, that's it for now have a nice day